Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm I'm Mo. Welcome to to Pixel Me. Welcome to medium resolution me to bandwidth transmitted me, fractured and reassembled me. Hi. I'm Mo. I'm the distortion of Mo, the edges of Mo, the slowness and blurriness of Mo. I'm not actually here. I'm here in a digital green space. My boundaries are determined partly by me and partly by the ability of various cameras, filters and codes to determine the difference between me and this green. There's also a robot trying to translate what I'm saying into closed captions for non-hearing viewers. Not all the words that appear will be words that I have said. This all makes for sloppy boundaries sometimes. Fuzzy edges, undefined terms. The apparatus sometimes chops off my extremities and grows me new limbs. I'm blobby. I'm goofy, I'm disappearing sometimes. Just know that my resolution is part of a dialogue between me and various apparatus, not exclusively my own will, decision, volition, agency, but my choices do shape the edges. Sometimes I'm disappearing on purpose. This reminds me, um, you should go grab a green plant. Have it with you. You'll need it for later. Go ahead and grab one. I'll wait. Anyway, I'm not really here either. I'm here in a digital void. I'm fuzzy sometimes. I'm hoping it makes me more soft, more cuddly. We're gonna meditate through this space. We're gonna meditate through pixels and glitches. My space has a resolution of 720 by 1280 pixels. It may look different to you depending on the size of your screen. You know pixels, these guys. This moving white square isn't actually just one pixel, it's more like five. But if I just moved one pixel around the screen, it would be difficult for you to see on your various devices. Anyway, look at this guy. Just a mass of thousands of black points of light gathering to articulate your screen with one white square fucking up the serenity as it travels through space. Or alternately, one repeating white square, oblivious to the fact that its context is built entirely of black squares. Or, alternately, look at this non-human entity I immediately identify with, as, and it is, as it is the only thing moving on the screen. Or, alternately, look at all those points of data, articulating shapes and giving us the impression of motion. Or, alternately, dear God, yet another, another, another pixel. We're hanging out with a lot of pixels lately, right? We're spending hours with pixels, days. We've been cohabitating with pixels all year. We might as well be fully present with them, accept them as part of our ecological reality, get cozy with them. Let's start with a line of pixels, this time a single line of actual pixels scaled to the screen. As it travels up the screen, go ahead and inhale. As it travels down the screen, go ahead and exhale. And as you do that, I'm gonna back away and give you space. So exhale. And inhale. And exhale. And inhale. and exhale, and inhale, 
and exhale. And inhale. And exhale. <sighs> okay, so it seems like attuning to a line of pixels has brought us into a Zoom meeting. It's okay. It was probably unavoidable. Except now, instead of feeling some kind of zen, we might feel kind of trapped in a pixel box, scanned, surveilled, bored, and a bit cut off from the folks around us. Okay, uh, hi, hi, sorry, hi, <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, and I'm, I'm going to need to take a minute uh, to practice smiling relentlessly to keep things going, moving in this Zoom meeting about a bureaucratic protocol that uh, seems pretty fucking irrelevant to the grand scope of things, especially considering my colleagues are mostly stock footage, so let's, uh, let's take five breaths um, of dropping out of pretenses and then snapping into a smile. It's going to be a drop on the exhale and a smile on the inhale, okay? So, so go ahead and breathe with me. So go ahead and uh, exhale on the drop, and exhale, drop, and smile, inhale. Exhale, drop, inhale, smile. Exhale, drop, inhale, smile. Exhale, drop. Inhale, smile. Okay. Uh, we've maintained uh, some modicum of professionalism, but there's a lot of interrupty, stressful world events invading the space. So we probably need to change our tactics. So let's shift to an internal reflection to find some inner stillness. Go ahead and close your eyes and just concentrate on the breath coming in and out of your nose. Don't force your breath, just breathe normally. We're not gonna worry about anyone or anything except for that breath coming in and out of our nose. Just focus on the inhalations and the exhalations as they travel through your nostrils and think about how the breath passes over your upper lip. And as we do that, we might get a sense of the temporariness of many things. The breath that passes over my nose is fleeting. The air that passes through my nose is never the same breath twice. It passes. It passes over my upper lip, through my nose, and down into my lungs. It passes from my lungs, up my trachea, out of my sinuses, out of my nose, over my upper lip, and out into the world. It passes in the same way that light passes. It cycles as screens cycle, as pixels cycle. The dots on my screen are constantly refreshing themselves, just as we are constantly refreshing our supply of oxygen. The pixels are ultimately points of light, points of light generated by a screen, which is constructed of a series of materials, which have been exploitatively extracted from resources, which are dependent on the cycle of the planet and its sun. So here we are in a space of light constructed by pixels. Okay, the light is traveling at approximately 186,000 miles per second. It is moving imperceptibly fast, but we are here. Having attuned ourselves with the full spectrum of light, we can start to bring other things into the space with us. 
especially those that are also dependent on light, like plants. So embrace the plant that I asked you to grab earlier. If you don't have a plant, consider opening a window or a door and breathing with plants out of doors or lacking that. Think about the carbon dioxide you are trapped in your closed windowless space with and contemplate where your oxygen comes from. This is a plant, but you're not seeing a full plant. You're seeing a lack of an articulated image. You're seeing a lack of pixels. The plant isn't fully here. It's green, and so it can't be distinguished from the field of pixels surrounding me. The camera knows that the plant is not me, understands it as part of the digital field in which I live. The camera recognizes the plant as a component of my digital ecosystem. So I'm gonna sit here and breathe with my plant pixels, and you sit and breathe with your plant pixels, or the ambient oxygen of plants made of light that you have in your vicinity. But let's start by push pushing pixelated boundaries. Stick your face in your plant. Breathe. Your carbon dioxide feeds a great many things. It feeds plants, it feeds air currents, it feeds forests, it feeds the systems that create light and make pixels. It feeds rhythms and cycles, and it is dependent on those rhythms and cycles. The plant's breath extends out through its respirated oxygen, out into my inhalations, out into greater circulations of air, into local molecular exchanges and global air currents. It breathes and its breath serves as a connective force, a basic function, a grounding element, a chemical reality, and a disruption of boundaries. The edge of its breath is not clearly defined. The edge of my breath is not clearly defined. plant has become one with the digital ecology. Let's join it. We're going to end our meditation by breathing through tonal levels. As a digital image, I'm made up of red, green, and blue color channels. Each channel has a bit depth, or a number of tonal levels or brightness values that make my face. Stepping back through these, reducing them to the smallest amount of variation possible, is going to reveal my basic constructs, and then return me beyond that, to the digital ecology of the void. There's a history to our digital representations in color and points of light. In limiting the bit depth of each of my color channels, we go backwards in time through the physical limits of historic graphic hardwares. Let's assume your screen is set to deliver billions of colors and start by taking a deep breath down to 32-bit color. <sighs> 32-bit depth. I'm still me. I still consist of billions of colors, only slightly fewer billion. If you look closely, you'll notice clear internal boundaries starting to come into focus. <sighs> 24-bit depth. Now I'm becoming more of a terrain, with different levels banding into separate tones of color, like a canyon or a mine. Let's keep going. 18-bit depth. The separations start to become more pronounced, especially if we bump it down to 16-bit depth. I'm fracturing into levels. You can see lines of transition clearly. I like to think of it as a form of aging, a kind of tonal wisdom. Do I look digitally wiser? Should we keep going? 8-bit depth. 
Now I'm kind of a retro poster, but I'm also NES, VGA, extractions of information, carvings of light. Let's get deep into my basic values and contrasts. It's important that we accept our constructs as a step towards attuning to all things. I'm going to bet that how I'm constructed has a lot to do with whiteness. <sighs> Seven. <sighs> Six. <sighs> Five. <sighs> Four. <sighs> Three. <sighs> Two. 